to Position for Impact, the media ministry of Oasis of Hope family. Cultivating a spirit-led mindset. Amen? Amen. I want us to go to the book of Luke chapter 5. Luke in the book chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, that's verse 37 to 38. It says, And no man puts new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine shall, must be put in new bottles, and both are preserved. Now, these bottles that they are talking about, it was a special kind of uh, skin that wine, they used to store wine in. So it's not a glass thing like this one. You know, and, and uh, when, when the, new wine, uh, the new wine is put in these wineskins, the wineskins that are new are able to expand you know, because wine, for whatever reason, it causes the, the skin to expand. So what happens is that when the wine is, 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 is been spent, they used to take oil and now rub the old wine skins with to make it more flexible and, and, um, and, and, and more elastic. And then they will put new wine inside. Otherwise, if they put the new wine in the old wine skin, when it starts to ferment and expand, then it will break. The, 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 the container will break, and that will be a waste both for the wine and for the bottles. Amen? So this is a picture of what, because everything we read in the Bible is a symbol of something. And what I get from this is that we are the vessels that Christ is putting his new wine, his Holy Spirit in. If we remain old without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the oil of the Spirit, we are going not to be able to handle the new thing that God is doing in our lives. So this means that we have to be transformed at all times. This vessel, you know, the Bible also says in another place that if a man cleanses himself, he'll be made a vessel of honor. Amen. I want to be made a vessel of honor. I, know, I don't know about you today. I want to be a vessel of honor, fit for the master's use and fit for every good work. So this wine, uh, wine skin, we take it as our own bodies that without the Holy Spirit, we remain old. We remain remain unteachable. We remain unable to be transformed. And so when the Holy Spirit who comes in his power, power that is put in a vessel that is not ready to be used by God is destructive. Is destructive. That's why we see many people who are anointed and we wonder what happened to this one. Don't they fear the Lord? Yes, they fear the Lord, but they've not been able to purge themselves, to change themselves, to allow the word to transform their lives so that they can be changed and that they be and then be able to contain the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we purge ourselves, the Bible says, when a man purges himself, he will be a vessel of honor, ready for every good use. Amen. So this old wine skin. When new wine is put on, it causes, it, to, it causes it to burst. Amen? But if we allow the Holy Spirit, the, the new wine, the oil of the Spirit to cleanse us, to sanctify us, to mold us and transform us, we will be ready for the master's use. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to be transformed. I looked Miriam Webster dictionary describes being transformed as to change in composition or structure or to change the outward appearance of or to change in character or condition. And then there's another one to cause a cell to undergo genetic transformation. That is transformation. You are transformed. Transport is a form of changing. Amen. You're changing to from being an old wine skin to being a new wine skin. You're changing from the old self to becoming your new self. If any man be in Christ, behold 
the old things are passed away, everything has become new. So Jesus was giving this parable and he was saying that we do not want to put new wine into old wine skins. How many know that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds, it's a continuous tense, proceeds out of the mouth of God. Without our minds being transformed, we cannot be able to receive the new word, the now word that God is giving us. Amen. So we have to be transformed. The Bible says in Romans that be not conformed into this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Amen. That we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed. We should be changed in composition and structure. We should be changed in the outward appearance. We should be changed in our character and condition to be more like Christ. Amen. And if we refuse to change, anyone who refuses to read the word of God is, has refused to change. Because it is only the word of God that can transform us. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. So be not conformed into this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we know that it is only reading the word of God that is able to transform our minds. That we are able to be more like Christ. That we are able to know the riches of his glory and the riches of in his inheritance in Christ Jesus. Amen. Your thinking can hinder your progress in life. My thinking can hinder my progress in life. What I think determines what I do and how I act and how I live my life. Amen. What I think affects me. There was a time when I was, I was, I was burdened with evil forebodings. Every time thinking evil, every time thinking that I am nothing, I can do nothing. I don't belong at this place. I don't belong here. Oh, what are people thinking about me? Maybe they don't like me. And it was because my mind was not transformed to be like Jesus that I knew that I am accepted. That tells me that I am accepted. I am loved. I am, I am accepted in the beloved. So when I kept on thinking, this negative thinking, it affected how I lived my life. It affected how I related to people. It affected everything that I did. You know, because I would prefer to just be in the house by myself. If God commanded me, go to that function and talk to somebody. Maybe someone needs to hear the word from your mouth. I will stay in my house just hiding. Because my mind was not transformed to be the, into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you can't have a new life with old thinking. We cannot have a new life. We cannot have a transformed life when we think in the old way. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, to change us, to make us more and more like Jesus Christ. So what are you thinking about yourself this afternoon? If you can just reflect as I am speaking, what is it I am thinking about myself? Sometimes people think that I, I am not as pretty as the next girl. I am not as skinny as the next girl i am not as chubby as that one I, because yeah human beings are a bit interesting because some people think that okay that one she looks so beautiful she's shaped nicely i am just like this you know oh her hair is more beautiful than i am so what are we thinking about our lives the bible tells me that we are fearfully and wonderfully made when you're confident that god has created you fearfully and wonderfully then you know that I am able to stand strong. You know, when you feel pretty, you're able to just stand and you're a bit confident. Eh? That's why women take a little bit more time, you know, in front of the mirror. And then we can go out and we can smile at the world. Amen? We can smile at the world. So what thoughts are we allowing to go through my mind? What are, th what, what are the, some of the thoughts that we are allowing to go through our minds? Are, we, are, are they thoughts of defeat? Are they thoughts of, you know, um, of, of, of depression? Are they thoughts of fear? Are they thoughts of anxiety? We have to allow good thoughts to go through our minds. The Bible tells me that God thinks good thoughts towards us. And if God is thinking good thoughts towards me, I ought to think good thoughts towards myself. Amen? 
because I am created in the image of God. And he says he's thinking good thoughts about me. Therefore, I need to think the thoughts that God is thinking towards me. You are blessed. You are favored. You are set upon high places. You are, uh, you are amazing. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. This is the things that thought God is thinking about you today. You need to start thinking the same things about yourself. Amen. As a man thinks, so is he. As we allow our thoughts to take control of our, of our lives, that's how we look at the world. Science says that when a baby is in the stomach, the way the mother perceives the world is the same way the baby will be born perceiving the world. If the baby looks, if the mother thinks the world is a hostile place, the baby will be born into this world thinking that the world is a hostile place. So science proves that what we think and how we perceive the word and the, the thoughts that we allow ourselves to go through when we are pregnant is what our babies are born thinking into this earth. That's amazing, isn't it? So there's nothing more powerful than a changed mind. As a man thinks, so is he. What you think about yourself is what you're going to act like. What you're going to present to the world. Amen. So I want us to go through this place and out of this place today thinking that I am beautiful. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a conqueror. I am victorious. I can do all things because Jesus Christ, he lives inside of me. The one who lives inside of me is greater than the one who lives inside inside the world. I can do all things. I am victorious. There is nothing that I cannot conquer because the Holy Spirit who has all power and authority lives inside of me. Amen. This is what we need to think about ourselves at all times. Victory starts in our minds. Victory starts in your mind. Victory starts in our minds if we allow it. Limitations also start in our minds. And these result in limited vision and a limited life. Because I hear uh, when, when we came, come into this nation, we are told that Danish is a very difficult language to learn. Danish is a very difficult language to learn. And everybody says Danish is a very difficult language to learn. And the Danish people will tell you Danish is one of the hardest, the hardest uh, languages to learn. And I learned to tell them something. When they tell me Danish is very difficult, I say, but how come babies can speak Danish? Babies can speak Danish. So it means that it's not that difficult. Amen. When we put our minds to something, we are able to achieve anything that we, we set out to achieve. Of course, we can speak Danish. We'll speak with an accent, yes. If you learn a new language, you're going to speak with a, with a dominant lang uh, uh, accent that you have, you know. So, but, but that doesn't mean you don't understand the language and you don't speak the language. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. God desires to change us to be totally transformed into the image of his dear son, Jesus Christ. That's why we come to church. That's why we read the word. That's why we, you know, we, 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 we dwell in the presence of God. Because our desire, my desire should always be that I want to be more and more like Jesus. Amen. I mean, we have role models when we are going through life, we have role models. I want to be like that one. I want to look like this one. So you find people transforming themselves. I met a girl once. She's very, very beautiful. But she had fixed her, fixed her cheekbones. You know, they, they can chisel these things. Plastic surgery is something amazing. So she chiseled, she chiseled her cheekbones to look a certain way. She chiseled her nose to look a certain way. Even her chin, she got it changed. And then, and then you change your, your, the size of your bosom. You change this and you change the other. And so they go changing everything because they think, God, you did not create me nicely. I need to change this. So these plastic surgeons make a lot of money because we have people walking around on this earth who do not know who they are, who don't know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, who don't know that they are beautiful. People who don't know that they are just 
perfect the way they are. Perfect with the nose God gave them. Perfect with the chin God gave them. Perfect with the legs God gave them. We are perfect. Tell yourself, I am perfect. I am beautiful. And you are not going to try and make anything, you know, different in your body because God has created you the way he's created you. And it is just perfect. If the enemy can defeat you in your mind, he can defeat you in your life. If he can defeat you in the way you think, he can defeat everything about you. Amen? If he can defeat, you know, uh, you in your mind, if he can win the battle in your mind, he's able to win everything in your life. Amen? Because if he tells you, you need to change this because you're not perfect, you're going to think that this is not perfect, then I have to change it. And he's defeated you in that area. And then he's going to find something else. Because I bet you, people who start plastic surgery, they never stop. They never stop. Because you will do your Botox, especially Botox. You want big African lips and God has not given you big African lips. You will be injecting Botox in yourself. You know, you will never stop. Because it is not as big as you want it to be. It is not as big. So if the enemy has defeated you in that area, I bet you he's going to continue until he has totally finished you. People have died because of Brazilian, you know, lifts in different areas. And it's big in the States. It's big because people want to look like Brazilians. So now I'm a white woman, but I want to look like a Brazilian. I mean, the devil is a liar with all his confusion. Amen. We are confident in who God has created us to be. So God wants to conform you and transform you into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. He wants to change us and he wants us to win this battle in our minds. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. Let us just go there. Romans. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is, sub it is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh cannot what? They cannot please God. I like what the common English Bible says. People whose lives are based on selfishness think about selfish things. But people's, whose, people whose lives are based in the spirit think about things that are related to the spirit. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death. But the attitude that comes from the spirit leads to life and peace. So the attitude that comes from selfishness is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law because it cannot. People who are self-centered are not able to please God. People who are, not, who are self-centered are not able to please God. So where is my, my mindset? Ask yourself, where is my mindset? Is it in the spirit or is it in the flesh? Flesh means that you are putting yourself before Christ. That is what, means, what it means to be carnally minded. You're putting yourself before Christ. Flesh is being self-centered. It's only me, myself, and I. All the time. Me, myself, and I. And it's about pleasing myself at all times. Not caring about how I'm hurting any other person. It's only about what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. Nobody should tell me anything about it. But we need a God narrative in our lives. Amen. We need a, a narrative that will cultivate a spirit-led mindset. We have to get the narrative from God. We have to get it and we have to know it. 
We have to believe it. We have to repeat it. And we have to be shaped by it. And that we may live by it. This narrative we get it only through the word of God. We get the narrative to cultivate a spirit led mindset through the word of God. So when we receive the word of God we believe it. We have to know it. We have to repeat it over and over again. We have to be shaped by it and then we have to live by it. Amen. I live by the word of God. I am controlled by the word of God. I am shaped by the word of God at all times. So when God tells me I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that is what I choose to believe. Amen. If God tells me that I am a conqueror, that is what I choose to believe. It, God tells me I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That is what I choose to believe. If God tells me I shall shine like the stars in heaven, that is what I choose to believe because I want to be shaped by the word of God. I want to live by the word of God. I want to be transformed by the word of God because many books can inform you. When I read many books, they can inform me, but it is only the word of God that is able to transform my life. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. I live by this resolve. I shall be led by the Spirit of God. I shall live in a Spirit-led mindset at all times. It is not easy. It is not easy. Right now I'm watching a series on Netflix called The Good Doctor. And, and, and it's not easy. Sometimes instead of picking up my Bible and reading, I want to turn on Netflix and watch The Good Doctor. Amen. Is it transforming my life? No. Is it changing my life to be more like Jesus? No. But what do I need to do if I want to cultivate a spirit-led mindset? I have to get into the word. Amen. I have to get this God narrative into my life. Amen. Because God, the God narrative will replace every lie the enemy has put in my life and will replace it with God's truth. Amen? The enemy likes to plant lies in our lives. You're not able to overcome that. He will tell you you're not able to overcome that. But hey, the devil is a liar. He says that, that the gr greater is he who is in me. So if Jesus who is living in me is greater than then the one who is living in the world, means that I will be able to overcome everything that the enemy, enemy tries to shoot at me. Amen? I am able to overcome the fiery darts from the enemy. Hallelujah. I am able to overcome every feeling of low self-esteem the enemy tries to shoot at me. Amen. I am able to overcome it because I receive the God narrative in my life. I receive the God narrative in my life. I choose to listen to the narration that God is putting in my heart through his word. Amen. So I have to prioritize the word of God. Hallelujah. I have to prioritize the word of God in my life. Your religion becomes useless and of no effect because... We have not learned to say the things God is saying about us. Then we just become religious. I know there's a certain religion of people, they like to say, I don't eat that, and I don't eat that, and I don't eat that. But the filth that comes out of their mouth, it would be better if they eat this, this you know, uh, <laughs> pig meat. But as Christians, we repeat the word. We live the word. We live by the word. By the word. We are shaped by the word. We repeat it. And then we know it in our Noah. Amen? That this is what the word of God says. It's not, not only about what I show people. Because sometimes we can show a very good front to people. And we can show that we are perfect. But deep down inside, we know that we are not changed. Deep down inside, we are not transformed. So we need to be honest to God and tell him, change this part of my life. I don't like the way I allow low self-esteem to take charge. Father, help me know who I am. Tell me who I am. I want to know who I am through your word, Lord. Show me who I am because I need to know. Amen. So we don't want a useless religion. That will cause us to just say I'm a Christian, but I don't repeat what the word is saying about me. 
I am a born again believer, but we don't know what the word says about every situation in our lives. Amen. We need to know what the word of God is saying. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves and their devotion is worthless. We don't want to be like those people. That is from the book of James. If I claim devotion to God, I have to control what I'm saying. Amen? I have to control what I'm saying. Otherwise, I, my devotion is worthless and I'm just deceiving myself. Amen? So I have to say what the word of God is saying. I have to say what God is saying about me. Hallelujah. Romans 8, chapter one, uh, Romans 8 verse 1 says, Therefore... There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Condemnation is finished. It no longer has a grip on you if you are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation is finished. It has no grip on you when you are in Christ Jesus. But you're saying, Catherine, we, if I fall, what does that mean? If you fall, the Bible also tells me, a righteous man, though he falls seven times, yet shall he rise up again. Amen? The victory is in the rising. Amen? The victory is in the rising. You're going to be tested and, 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 and buffeted from all sides. But greater is he who is in you. You are able to overcome. Amen? Don't let the enemy condemn you. Don't let him say that, nah, 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 you did this and you did the other and so you're not a child of God. A righteous man, though he falls seven times, yet shall he rise up again. Hallelujah. Do not allow the enemy to put you down. Do not allow the enemy to keep you down there. Do not allow him to put his knee on your neck and not allow you to stand up ever again. You have to rise up and you have to say that, yes, I have fallen, but I'm rising up again. Yes, I have failed this time, but I'm rising up again. Yes, I have missed the mark this time, but I will press on towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I am able to run this race. I am able to finish this race in the name of Jesus. So condemnation has no grip on you. And when does condemnation lose its grip on you? When you know who you are in Christ. When you live about with what the word says about you. If you believe what the word says about you. If you allow yourself to be shaped by this word. Then condemnation will have no grip on you. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. So you have to tell condemnation. I have changed my mind. Amen. Tell condemnation. I have changed my mind. I am not going to allow you in my heart anymore. Tell fear. I have changed my mind. I am not going to allow fear in my life anymore. Tell fear. You are not welcome in my life anymore. You have to tell condemnation and anxiety. I have changed my mind. I am not going to allow anxious thoughts to rule my my mind when I'm supposed to be sleeping at night. Oh, I'm not going to be anxious anymore because God and me, we cannot stay awake at the same time. If God is the one who's staying awake, I better get a good night's sleep with no fear, no anxiety. So tell discouragement, I have changed my mind. My mind is transformed into the express image of the Son of God. Tell your struggles that I have changed my mind. I am not going to be led and controlled by the struggles that I am facing. Tell discouragement, I have changed my mind. Tell fear, anxiety, or depression, I have changed my mind. You are not going to control me anymore. Fear, you are not welcome in my life anymore. Sinful lifestyle, you are not welcome in my life anymore. Because I am able to achieve and I am able to live a victorious Christian life because Jesus gives me the strength hallelujah glory be to Jesus this is the God narrative that we need hallelujah in our lives in the name of Jesus hallelujah so the Bible says that in the same book of Romans 8 
And verse 8 he says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. Amen? You are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. This is the, what the word of God is saying about you. You are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. Amen? If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Amen? You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Everyone in this room right now has the spirit of Christ. Amen? How do we know we have the spirit of Christ? We have confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Therefore, we are not walking in the flesh. So this is going to give you a narrative, a God narrative in your life. Amen. That I am not in the flesh. I am walking by the spirit of God. Because why? They that are in the flesh cannot please God. My life, I have been created to please God at every moment in my life. Amen. So you are getting this God narrative in your life saying the things that God is saying about you. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. But I am not in the flesh. I am in the spirit. Amen. I live by the spirit of God. I am controlled by the spirit of God. I listen to what the spirit of God is saying about me. I listen to what the word of God is saying about me. Amen. We have two natures, the flesh and the spirit, the natural and the spiritual. Amen. There's someone who put it very nicely. He says we are, we are spirit beings in natural bodies. Amen. So we are spiritual beings in natural bodies. When I sit and I'm watching the good doctor from morning to evening, I am not feeding my spirit. Amen? That's the truth. My girls are laughing because they know I love that series very much. But when I'm watching the good doctor, I am not feeding my spirit. I am feeding my flesh. But what determines what the God narrative in my life is going to be? It is not the good doctor. It's when I sit down and I soak in this word. It's when I sit down and I soak in what the, God, what the Lord is saying about my life. This is the word that is able to transform me. Because the good doctor is not going to transform my life in any way. Good doctor is not going to make me overcome feelings of fear and anxiety in any way. We have two natures. The nature that you feed the most becomes your dominant nature. So which nature do I want to dominate in my life? What nature do you want to dominate in your life? You are free from the flesh to the degree that you're controlled by the spirit. You are free from the flesh to the degree that you are controlled by the spirit. You are free from the flesh to the degree that you are controlled by the spirit. Amen. So if I continue feeding my flesh, feeding my flesh, the Kardashians come, I want to watch them. Oh, the good doctor comes, I want to watch them. Oh, what other series are there? There's so many series. If it comes out, I want to watch it. I want to dwell there. That is the, the, that is the nature that I'm feeding. But I want to feed the nature of God. Amen. I want to feed my spiritual nature. I want to feed my spiritual nature. Amen. So I don't want to live like an atheist, not believing that God exists. I, want, I don't want to put God to the side. I want to live knowing that God exists. He's a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him.